raped, strangled with pantyhose, and left for dead. It was very brutal. This wasn't this guy's first crime. It's a mystery that's baffled cops for decades and left a violent killer on the loose. He was able to just slip away like that and vanish. Karen Class was married to rock and roll royalty Bill Medley of the 1960s group The Righteous Brothers, their hit Unchained Melody featured in the movie Ghost. But the haunting music would come to an end when Karen's life was snuffed out by a deranged killer. He probably saw Karen, she was a very beautiful woman, and just decided he was gonna do that, and he did. Now her sons are talking, telling Crime Watch Daily about the event that scarred their lives forever. What's your fondest memory of you and your mom? I was 11 years old when she passed away, and she was extremely loving, kind, full of vitality. Unfortunately for me, you know, she, she died when I was very young, just right at my fifth birthday. With no tangible clues, the unsolved case was filed away, left to collect dust in the archives of the Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department. Then, more than 30 years later, detectives Larry Brandenburg and Tom Harris took another look at the case. Once so cold, it froze over. Uh, there were some investigative things that were never done that we wanted to try and find. The morning of the grisly murder started like any other day for Karen, who lived in this house in the quaint coastal town of Hermosa Beach, California. She was supposed to go to coffee with her neighbors after she took her child to school. But coffee was not on the menu. The 32-year-old mom never showed up. So they went over to Karen's house to check on her. They get to the back sliding door. It was open a little bit. They called Karen's name and heard a muffled sound. Frightened, her friends ran for help, and as they round the corner, a shocking sight. The front door opened, and a gentleman came out with bushy, kind of long hair and a beard. And he said, hi, ladies. And this really startled. Frantically, the women called 911, and when cops arrived, they find Karen nude, lying on the floor in her bedroom. One leg of the pantyhose bound her hands and then the other leg of the pantyhose was used along with her bra to strangle her. Unbelievably, Karen is still alive but unconscious. The neighbor ladies actually interrupted the killer. He had completed the rape, but he hadn't completed strangling her yet. Karen was rushed to the hospital, but she never came out of her coma. Tragically, she died a few days later. Do you remember the moment you heard your mom was murdered? What was that like? I remember he was, he was in tears and then explained to me that, you know, that my mom had passed and uh, that I, wouldn't, I would never see her again. As the boys were hearing the devastating news, cops were collecting key evidence, Karen's bra and pantyhose and a towel laying near her body covered with the suspect's DNA. You know, they did a pretty good crime scene investigation and even though DNA was not the realm yet, <laughs> But cold case detectives were left with no pictures of the crime scene. 40 years ago, investigators didn't take photographs at the scene unless a body was left murdered there. We didn't have much to go by. But detectives did have a loose description of the mystery man. With that, forensic artists were able to come up with this composite sketch, although at the time, it didn't nab the killer. Now cops had DNA testing in their arsenal. Karen had remarried and then was divorced again, and she had a boyfriend. We checked his DNA. We also checked her husband's DNA, her ex-husband's DNA. Everybody was cleared. Even the reopened case started hitting a brick wall. So at this point, we're getting pretty discouraged and thinking, gee, you know. Well, I really came to grips with it wasn't going to get solved. But the hunt for the elusive killer stays relentless. But every five or six years, I get a call from my dad and say, hey, you know, I think they have another lead or they want to look at this. And finally, a game-changing phone call from the lead forensic biologist who worked the Karen Class case for years. She goes, have you ever thought about doing familial? You know, I said, well, not really, but, you know, maybe we should do that. That's all we have left. 
Familial DNA is a powerful crime-fighting tool. Lab techs look for a possible male relative of the suspect, a criminal whose genetic profile is in the database. They then try to match the relative's DNA with that of the suspect. When she first mentioned it to you, what did you think? I'd never used it before, but I go, this is our last resort, so why not? The original evidence, because I had extracted DNA, uh, originated from a, a towel that had a semen stain on it that was found next to the victim. But then... They ran it, called me and said nothing. A few years pass, still no answers, but dogged cops won't give up. And one day, out of the blue, a call from the familial DNA lab. Giselle called me like a month or two later and said, are you sitting down? I said, no, why? She said, they got hit. It was shocking. I didn't realize how it was going to hit me. Um, until, until, until a couple days after um, they let me know. After four long decades, the L.A. County Sheriff's Department finally names the elusive suspect. I'm proud to be able to announce that the good work of Sheriff's Homicide Unsolved Unit in positively identifying suspect Kenneth Troyer in the cold case of Karen Class. Kenneth Eugene Troyer, a violent California prison escapee, a suspect in several other sexual assaults, was long dead. Troyer was shot and killed in a 1982 standoff with police. Knowing the identity of his ex-wife's suspected killer has brought closure to Bill Medley after years of anguish. There's been a voice in the back of my head, probably Karen telling me, you know, since about, you know, 20 years ago, drop it, let it go. This guy is either dead or he's in prison. And uh, it's just, it's, it's closure, you know. And now, thanks to the unrelenting work of the L.A. County Sheriff's Department, they too will be able to close the book on this case. You continue to fight for this case and finding this case 40 years after the murder. Well, number one, it's our job. Number two, it's the right thing to do. And it's what we do here. It's our purpose. California was the first state to make familial DNA testing legal. Critics say the practice is a violation of civil rights, but it's certainly hard to argue with the results. Police credit the technology with helping them catch the serial killer known as the Grim Sleeper in Los Angeles, as well as a serial child abduction suspect recently in Cleveland.